Back whenever we were challenging uh, Robin Hood chapter 41 and, and uh, Representative Branch visited our district and I was able to talk to him uh, quite a bit. He is pushing, he was pushing, and I think still is pushing for federal funding to be, you know, part of the formula, if you will. And uh, I, that's why I think I shared this with you whenever you had that meeting with us, and that, that I really was hoping that maybe you'd hook up with Dan Branch, because I, I think that that would, that would make a difference. wanted to make a quick statement. Um, charter buses and all of that is really nice and it's something I think we would all love to have here, but I'm talking about basics. I mean, we don't even have elective courses. We don't have vocational courses. We cut out a lot of our, you know, uh, art and music courses and Spanish courses. So I'm talking about just getting that stuff back here. And do you have any realistic ideas about, your ideas about how to address this nearer than the yeah, I don't want to sit around and wait for the courts. I think Omar alluded to the fact that it would be 2014, maybe September. So we're going to have a legislative session January of 2013. And so we're going to wait 18 months until we have some sort of resolution. And I, I'm not a fan of, of waiting. What motivated me to get into politics was the tax change swap that happened in 2005 that went into effect in 2006. We changed our business tax, called the franchise tax, to a margins tax. You, and, and that's what really decreased our state revenue and left us in this gap that we have right now. And if I could wave a wand and go back to the way things were back in 2005, I would. It, then we wouldn't be in this $4 billion hole every legislative session. But some ideas that uh, that I'm hearing and that I'm working on, I like the ideas with, you know, just, I'm just jot some notes down here about gold pennies and, and how we can work that legislatively. So that again, we can keep more money, like I said, I'd like there to be 109 gold pennies for Wimberley. Uh, that's not realistic, but you've got to take small steps and chip away at these things so that we can keep more of our money here locally. And, and speaking with other members of PubEd, then wanting to restore some of the funding that was cut I think that's going to happen, and I, I personally do not want to wait past this legislative session to fix the problem that we're in. Well, I think it's imperative, <clears throat> imperative, right now that House Club Ed definitely addresses at least, you know, giving us back some of that cut that we took, the 2.4. Golden pennies are huge, and 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 Omar, if I mistake this. I think, though, they were talking, at one point in time, I was at a hearing where there was discussion about two more additional bills and pennies, wasn't there? I don't yes, know where sir. that went. Yeah, I, well, I think it came out of the 2009 session. There was a bill that actually filed that, that would allow you to have two more of those bills and pennies uh, at your discretion. But uh, the governor, I believe, vetoed that uh, because that, that would represent a tax increase. You could, you could be able to go from dollar four to dollar six without voter approval. Other questions? <clears throat> I can't for the life of me understand why the legislature would defer a, de a decision on this to the, to the Supreme Court. I mean, our legislature, Texans just don't do that.
not raise the rainy day fund. So why do we think that he's going to do anything different in an upcoming legislative session? Our elected officials heard what we thought about school finance. We were at rallies. We talked to our legislators. Those guys did not respond. Okay? So I think that they've been given their chance to respond to us. Um, and then that kind of begs the question about what we do at the voter box. I'm not going to answer that question. 
So I apologize. Okay, other questions? Yes, Jim. Uh, 